I still did read them, Sarke. It was like sitting and thinking about having compulsory hijab and um, having the moments of safety freedom. It was for us, yeah, out of cities, in the roads, in some parts, we, we were free, but realizing that moment and understand the meaning of freedom. For Iranian women, when we go abroad to other countries, we are like, oh, it's like, it's like we don't have that uh, shadow of fear on our shoulder. Uh, in, in, in other countries, when you see uh, police officers, it, it means safety, security for women, as you know. But in Iran, uh, seeing police officers, it means be alert. It means, uh, it means fear. And when we are out of uh, our comfort zone, means our houses, it's like uh, we are in a war zone and it's like not feeling safe and having this shadow of fear. It was like two years ago, uh, the, first, um, the first or second weeks of, uh, of the beginning of the campaign, um, I joined the campaign. I started going out, taking some pictures, having some videos, and just simply uh, in that videos, I was talking the things that I was holding inside for 40 years. Um, I was living under restrictions uh, for 40 years, and I had a lot to say. So uh, I started uh, sending my videos to Massey. But after this, campaign, something changed inside me. And when I wanted to go out, um, uh, it was like I put my weight on my shoulder on purpose. And in that moment, I, I, the feeling I had just uh, um, empowered, I felt empowered and uh, free because that was my choice. Before that, I was just not careful about wearing hijab. But after that, I did it on purpose and it was a good feeling. من هم تصمیم گرفتم که همراه بشم با کمپین چهارشنبه های سفید برای نگفتن به حجاب اجباری و زندگی اجباری و نه بگم به کسایی که میخوان با به زور منو به بهشت خودشون بفرستن. من یه انسانم، یه زنم، بالغم خودم میدونم چه جوری زندگی کنم، خودم میدونم چه جوری دینم و اعتقاداتم و بهشت و جهنم و جهنم ما انتخاب کنم. As an Iranian woman, sometimes there were some pictures of men uh, wearing hijab instead of their wives or their uh, mothers and I was like wow and uh, it, it 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 means a lot for Iranian women because normally in Iran uh, men don't do anything uh, for the, they don't care and even politicians or activists they always like this is not the biggest issue we have bigger issue even women's right uh, rights uh, activists they will uh, they, they would say a compulsory hijab is not our uh, biggest issue we have uh, other issues that are more important in past, when, they, uh, when the uh, morality police officers or the Basiji peoples or the, our leaders' uh, followers uh, came um, uh, harass women in the streets or arrest them, uh, the other people were like, uh, they were silent. They wouldn't do anything. But right now, people get involved. Uh, men get involved to protect women, and you see it online. You see it in in videos. امروز چهارشنبه است و من تصمیم گرفتم با کمپین چهارشنبه های سفید تمرح بشم برای نشون دادن اعتراضم به هجاب اجباری و به زندگی اجباری. خیلی به من میگن که مشکل همین دو تا تاره مو نه مشکل من دو تا تاره مو نیست. مشکل من اینه که به شعورم توهین شده به قوه تشخیص هم توهین شده من یک انسانم یک زنم بالغم و خودم میتونم تشخیص بدم که چه جوری لباس بپوشم خودم حق دارم 
اعتقاداتم و دینم رو انتخاب کنم و هم همینطور بهشت و جهنمم رو پس لطفا منو به اجبار به بهشت خودتون نفرستیم و از همه دوستان و کسانی که معتقدن که این یه ظلم در حق زنان و با اجبار مخالفن میخوام که با من همراه بشن و چهارشنبه ها با یک نشونش سفید بیام بیرون ممنون When you are under uh, interrogation, that's the worst part because um, um, because uh, they accuse you of many things uh, that you uh, you have never been involved, and that was the the most scary things. I was accused of being a spy and um, being active against um, uh, national security and. Uh, and uh, at the same time, they don't let you to uh, talk to anybody, even your lawyer. And um, there are lots of accusations. For example, it was like, uh, so you're 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 not a Muslim. You uh, you don't believe in Islam, and you know what the, what that uh, what that means in Iran. It's like being executed. During interrogation, I I got beaten up badly, my whole face, and it yeah those moments were um, like the most humiliating uh, moments of my life. Have um, being um, helpless. I had these shots inside a uh, prison, and uh, they didn't tell me what was it, and uh, it was very uh, scary. Behind those doors, there is no justice, nothing, there is no law. They could do anything uh, with you and when uh, the first time you get arrested and realizing that there is no law is, uh, behind those doors is um, it's so scary. It reminds you of the movies, the whole um, story of Nasreen. It has been very emotional for me since the first day she got arrested. You know, she got arrested three days after my trial. Um, and I talked to her just three days before. And, uh, and uh, there, are, there are some people who say she's in jail because of me. It's, it hurts a lot. And... Uh, Having her inside prison was painful enough. They gave me 20 years. So, um, of course, they would uh, give my lawyer 30 years. Hearing about um, lashes is so painful. Actually, I'm thinking about starting this campaign against lashes in, uh, in countries like Iran, Saudi Arabia, all, all these Muslim countries. Because it's so barbaric, you cannot, uh, it, this is 21st century and uh, having a sentence like this on a person and even, even a criminal, it's, it's not right. She got 74 of those lashes actually because of my case. And it's so, it's so painful because they said, for spreading lies, according to my case, um, she gets 74 and uh, 12 years in prison and 74 lashes. But she was just telling public um, the truth. It wasn't lie. During my trial, during my hearings uh, and my jail time, I couldn't see her. I couldn't have her there as, a, as my lawyer to consult me. I just saw her. I just saw her in 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 the hearings, the last day of my prison time. So the the only thing as a as a human rights defender, as a human rights lawyer, the only thing she could do for me uh, was telling people about my situation inside jail. For example, I was beaten up, and she told public. She told she had some interviews. And uh, told them I was I was beaten up. So she was telling the truth, and I know that. But for they they are doing this to prevent other lawyers to tell the truth about the situation of their clients. They want to put silence on 
uh, human rights lawyer, activist, it's just they want to make an example of Nazreen or other human rights lawyer as they wanted to make an example for uh, of me for uh, for women she was she was my voice she was my only hope when i was in jail and uh, now the only thing i i think about is being her voice living in another land by but my mind uh, is in uh, my life is in iran and it's like living in uh, two different countries. Most of the nights I can't sleep. The news from my countries uh, are getting worse and worse. And uh, at the same time, I, I've been under lots of attacks um, after I left Iran. And um, for example, now they call me the, the traitor against the country or something because I went to Canadian uh, to, uh, to, to, to Canadian Parliament to testify um, for the violation of human rights in Iran and um, I called on the government to support uh, human rights defenders like my lawyer Nazri and um, yeah the, the, the Iranian officials uh, got angry because they, they spread this lie that uh, that from the first night they spread this lie that I asked for a sanction against Iran and it was uh, just a big lie but I got lots of backlashes and everything and they, they just uh, changed the whole story and uh, yeah for two weeks I was I was totally sick uh, because I, I was under lots of attacks but uh, it passed and I decided to continue and go on. Hello, Masif Chan. I would like to thank you for your support. You had a lot of work. You had a job for the campaign of four years. You had a job for the sound of us to the world. Well, we had a job for you. 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 و الان بیشتر جاهای دنیا بیشتر کانال های دنیا ما رو نشون دادن و همه مردم دنیا میدونن این روسری که رو سر ماست به اجباره به خواست خودمون نیست ولی میخواستم در مورد این دختری بگم که چهارشنبه گذشته با شجاعت تو میدون انقلاب روسریش رو بالای چوب برد و چرخون بدون هجاب این دختر نه از خودش عکس گرفت نه فیلم گرفت نه خودش رو معرفی کرد نه عکسی برای کمپین فرستاد فقط وایساد و اعتراضش رو به اون قشنگی نشون داد خیلی دختر شجاعی بود هیچ کدوممون نمیدونیم این زن کیه و الان چه اتفاقی واسش افتاده الان کجاست و چه بلایی سرش اومده و من میخوام از بقیه خانوما از این به بعد به که روسریشون رو بندازن و عکس بگیرن روسریامونو سر روسری و شالای سفیدمونو سر چوب کنیم و تکون بدیم و هممون عکس و فیلم برسونیم و پشت این دختر رو بگیریم این دختر یه قهرمانه امیدوارم که روزی به خواسته هامون برسیم و همه زنای ایران مثل این دختر شجاع و از خود گذشته باشه مرسی همین uh, همین uh, رئیسی از the chief of justice for Iranian people was like what had happened because many people voted in last election not to have him um, as a president they didn't vote for uh, rohani to be our president but they just voted not to have uh, a person like raisi uh, as a president and now he's uh, that he's the chief of justice was like um uh, what was that? There is no, uh, there is no democracy in Iran. We didn't want him to be there, and of course, it's not a good news. Uh, and we knew that the human uh, rights uh, is not gonna be uh, the situation of human rights is not gonna be better in, in Iran. Actually, it's getting worse. And if you see the sentences and the verdicts and uh, the trials, um, it shows that. Uh, He's uh, worse than the last one. He's one of the um, architects of 
violation against human rights uh, in Iran. And uh, actually, the, these people are the one who have to um, um, uh, face just uh, face. Uh, I don't know uh, um, trial, not human rights defenders. I don't. Uh, I'm not optimistic about. Um, uh, 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 having the better situation for human rights in Iran um, and and uh, also uh, compulsory hijab uh, because uh, unfortunately uh, the, the the thing that I realize is um, uh, 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 Islamic Republic of Iran um, had built uh, its identity on uh, women's hijab. And for them, it's like uh, if they um, uh, give us the choice, um, and um, uh, uh, it's like they they lose their identity. As long as they are there, I realize nothing is gonna change. But at the same time, we can uh, lose our hope, and we have to do um, we have to do anything to support. Uh, women to support activists inside Iran, the whole movement. I guess, in my point of view, this movement was the biggest movement after revolution so far.